Welcome to Untested Builds, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I'm still working my way through Final Fantasy VII, so this week we're building another pole runner up and getting one step closer to the founding of the Justice League on Galarian. I did watch Zack Snyder's Justice League over the weekend, but that featured like 10 seconds of the wrong lantern. Luckily, there's some awesome animated stuff featuring Hal Jordan, the first human Green Lantern in the history of the Green Lantern Corps. They're an intergalactic police force where each member is given a ring powered by the ambient will power generated by all life in the universe, taking the form of a green light. We've already built a character that uses light as a weapon before, so this is going to be a no-brainer. Alright, let's just take a look at the wiki for some of his powers and abilities. Oh, so he can basically do anything as long as his will is strong enough. That's, that's going to be a lot. For our goals for this build, you don't choose the ring, the ring chooses you, based on your ability to overcome great fear, which is usually a will save. What a coincidence. Second, just because the ring chooses us doesn't mean we don't have to dedicate ourselves to the cause. And lastly, we need to give our will a physical form, generating hard light constructs so we can tackle feasibly anything the universe could throw at us. For our stats, will may be tied to wisdom, but it's emotions that drive our power. For maxing charisma for more than just spells, Hal's most notable quality outside of his determination is his ability to relate to just about anyone, and his one-liners are just as epic. Wisdom next, I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to say will in this video, but take a shot of water each time for maximum hydration. Dexterity next, fighter pilots need some pretty good reaction time, and AC is nice if you don't like dying. Constitution is high enough, you're not really a tank per se, but getting up when you're knocked down is another willpower thing and a bit of strength, we need it for multi-classing, and some more oomph behind the occasional punch, and intelligence is last. Jordan's not dumb, but he's definitely more of an improv guy than a textbook guy. For our skills, we're taking legendary diplomacy. We're going to be the first human most of the galaxy's denizens come across, so making a good first impression is going to be vital. Legendary religion, the Guardians made a giant book called the Book of Oa that basically lists all the rules Green Lanterns have to follow, and if that's not a religion, I don't really know what is, and how Jordan can rattle off scripture with the best of them. And legendary society, you may not know every planet, species, and language in the known universe, but your ring certainly does. We're grabbing training in athletics and medicine, call it Air Force basic training, and lastly, training in arcana crafting and nature. There's only a handful of vehicles in second edition, and operating them usually falls under one of these, and we can pilot basically anything we come across. We're starting this off as a human, since that's all we really ever built here. Versatile humans get an extra general feat level 1, and piloting lore is mentioned in the Game Master Guide no less than 3 times, but there's no actual way to get it. So, we'll grab additional lore to get piloting lore and automatically increase our proficiency in it at levels 3, 7, and 15. We'll take the martial disciple background. We were a military pilot before our civilian days. We get training in athletics and warfare lore and the quick jump feat for free, meaning we can make a long or a high jump in a single action instead of two. For our ancestry feat, we're already making our first construct with arcane tattoos. We pick a school of spell and get a cantrip based on our choice that we cast as an arcane spell. We're going with conjuration for the tanglefoot spell. Not a particularly exciting spell, but good for slowing down fleeing baddies in a nice non-lethal way. We make a spell attack roll and give a target a minus 10 foot circumstance penalty to speed for one round and immobilizing them on a crit. For our class, we've got sufficiently advanced technology indistinguishable from magic thrust upon us by exceedingly powerful ancient beings from the center of the cosmos. If that's not an oracle, I don't know what is. Level 1 oracles choose a mystery as the source for their divine power. Cosmos mystery oracles gain resistance to physical damage equal to 2 plus half our level and we gain the spray of stars revelation spell. For a focus point, we force a reflex save in a 15 foot cone, dealing 1d4 fire damage and dazzling creatures who fail for some cosmic pew pew power. This also activates our oracular curse. Cosmos oracles have the curse of the sky's call, which thematically represents the inherent pull every Green Lantern feels between duty to their planet and duty to the core, but this affects us physically too, literally pulling us away from the ground, making us enfeebled and giving us a penalty to saves against grapples and shoves and other force movement effects until we rest for 8 hours. We'll take the moon domain since darkness is basically the opposite of what we're all about. The moonbeam domain spell makes a spell attack roll, dealing 1d6 fire damage to a creature, counting as coming from a silver source of damage for the purposes of overcoming resistances. We're not quite done taking spells just yet. For our cantrips, light makes an object look like a torch for a day. The shield spell raises a hands-free shield, granting a plus two circumstance bonus to AC until our next turn. While it's up, we can also use the shield block reaction for incoming attacks like normal, but also against incoming magic missiles. Forbidding Ward lets us shield someone else from a specific enemy, granting an ally a plus one status bonus to attacks and saving throws against an enemy for up to a minute. We can shield against more than just attacks and spells. Air Bubble lets us make a personal, habitable environment for a creature as a reaction. Only lasts one minute though, so probably not the best for taking your friends on a spacewalk. Admonishing Ray makes our constructs a bit more solid. We make a spell attack roll to deal 2d6 non-lethal bludgeoning damage with a giant green fist, or whatever blunt object that happens to come to your mind in the heat of battle. 
We'll pick up the Pilgrim's token feet to gain a ring with our religious symbol. Well, I guess that's the Guardian's religious symbol on it. As long as we carry it, we always go first in the tie when rolling initiative against an enemy. We've got our ring and we've got some powers, but we aren't dedicated to the core just yet. In addition to giving us heavy armor efficiency and training in two skills of our choice, the champion dedication allows us to devote ourselves to a deity and a cause. Wajet sounds like it could be a guardian name, but her title is the Green Empress, so that fits perfectly too. She also doesn't mind neutral good followers, which is good since we're definitely more of a redeemer than a paladin. Now that we have a deity, we can also make use of the Divine Lance cantrip to do a d4 plus 4 lawful or good damage based on a spell attack roll. Level 3 oracles gain signature spells, meaning we can freely heighten one of the spells in our repertoire for each spell level we know, meaning we don't have to learn admonishing rate 10 times just to make bigger fists. We also get level 2 spells. Resist energy is probably good to have when all of our enemies are exclusively using laser technology. We give a creature resistance 5 to our choice of acid, cold, electricity, fire, sonic damage for 10 minutes. Spiritual Weapon makes a magical version of our deity's favorite weapon, a light mace if you will, appearing next to our foe of our choice and immediately making a spell attack roll to strike them for 1d8 force damage or bludgeoning damage and making additional attacks every time we sustain the spell for up to a minute. We've got a bit of a feat nest here to sneak in an extra class feat. We're taking Ancestral Paragon to give us a first level Ancestry feat, which will be Natural Ambition, which gives us a first level class feat. Glean Lore makes a religion check to recall knowledge about anything we think might be contained in the Book of Oa, recalling incorrect or erroneous information on a fail. Unmistakable Lore gives us a regular fail or critical fail whenever we recall knowledge with our Warfare or Piloting Lore skill. We're supposed to be a professional after all. Divine Access lets us add cleric spells to our repertoire for a deity that shares a domain with our cosmos mystery. Kalora is another deity associated with celestial bodies, but more importantly, her cleric spells can help fill out some of our more powering abilities. Color Spray is a first level spell that forces a will save in a 15 foot cone, dazzling creatures who succeed and blinding and stunning creatures who fail. Level 5 oracles can cast third level spells. Searing Light puts a bit more will behind our zappy attacks, making a spell attack roll dealing 5d6 fire damage and an additional 5d6 good damage if the target is a fiend or undead since those things are usually evil and all. This also attempts to counteract any magical darkness it comes across in case you ever need to fight against enemies powered by the literal black emptiness of space. For our ancestry feat, Ornate Tattoo gives us a first level spell of our choice of the same school we chose for arcane tattoos. Temporary Tool is a conjuration spell that lets us make a simple tool that lasts for a single activity or up to a minute for the most utilitarian use of a powering imaginable. Glad Hand turns on that Hal Jordan charm allowing us to make an impression immediately upon meeting someone rather than needing to converse for one minute, but we take a minus 5 penalty to the check for our impulsiveness. We'll pick up our champion's reaction here. Glimpse of Redemption forces an enemy within 15 feet who damages an ally also within 15 feet to choose between following through on their attack or giving their target resistance and becoming enfeebled from the pure force of your willpower alone. Level 7 oracles gain resolve for master will saves and critical success results on regular successes. We also get expert divine spell attacks and spell DCs and can cast 4th level spells. Air walk lets a creature walk on air as if it were solid for 5 minutes which has a few pros over just gaining a fly speed. Most notably, we don't have to spend an action for each turn just to hover, meaning we can cast a 2 action spell and keep our shield up from a safe position overhead. For our general feat, Improvised Repair is probably intended to mean getting crafty with some tools or something, but in the Green Lantern animated series, they use their rings to fix things almost as often as they use them to break stuff. We can spend 3 actions to make a broken item usable again, but the item doesn't actually regain any hit points, so it'll break immediately if it takes damage before a non-hard light repair. We'll pick up some basic devotion for the Desperate Prayer Champion feat so we can regain a focus point as a free action once per day if we start our turn with no focus points. The prayers don't stop there however, Battle Prayer allows us to make a religion check against the will DC of a foe to deal 1d6 lawful or good damage. You've got the oath memorized by now right? Level 9 oracles gain magical fortitude for expert fortitude saves. We can also cast 5th level spells. Banishment forces a will save on a creature from a foreign plane returning it to its home dimension on a fail. Sending sends a message of 25 words or less to a creature we know as long as they're on the same planet and they can immediately respond in kind upon receipt of the message. The Aeromancer Ancestry feat lets us cast fly once per day so we can gain a fly speed for 5 minutes because sometimes flying is better than hovering. We'll pick up some champion resiliency for 3 additional max HP points for each champion feat we take. The recognized spell feat lets us use our reaction to identify an incoming spell. On a success we correctly identify it and on a crit we gain a plus 1 circumstance bonus to AC or our save against the incoming spell. 
Our best casting skill is religion since we've got experience fighting other lanterns, but we aren't a stranger to arcana and nature if the need arises. Level 11 oracles gain weapon expertise for expert proficiency in simple and martial weapons and unarmed attacks, alertness for expert perception proficiency, and we gain the effects of our major curse. Meaning if we cast another revelation spell while under the moderate effects of Curse of Sky's Call, we increase the enfeebled condition of 4 and take a bigger penalty against grapples and shoves, but it's not all bad. We also begin to float just above the ground, meaning we can stride across liquids, we don't leave tracks, and we don't trigger pressure plates, and we can jump 3 times the normal distance. We can also cast 6 level spells. The Power Ring is more than just a fancy ranged weapon, it bolsters our physical abilities too. Righteous Might gives us 10 temporary hit points, it makes our AC 20 plus our level, gives us dark vision and a 40 foot move speed and an athletics modifier of plus 23 and a magical light mace with an attack modifier of plus 21 that deals 3d8 holy axiomatic damage on hit just in case you get bored fighting from the back line. Scintillating Safeguard creates a barrier as a reaction for up to 5 creatures if an effect would deal them physical or energy damage, giving them 10 resistance to the incoming damage type. We've said a lot of wares this level, so let's take something simple for our general feat. The fleet feat gives us 5 more feet of movement speed for more floating, air walking, and flying. We'll pick up Domain Fluency for the advanced domain spell from the Moon Domain. Touch of the Moon gives us the ability to temporarily deputize a non-member into the core. We give a creature in touch range a glowing symbol for 1 minute. For the first time they have it, nothing happens, but on the second, they gain a plus 1 to attack rolls and a plus 4 to damage rolls. On the third turn, they gain a plus 1 to attack rolls and AC, and a plus 4 to their damage. On the fourth turn, they gain a plus 1 to AC and to saving throws, then after that the cycle starts again with them receiving no bonuses on the fifth turn, and then start receiving bonuses again on the sixth. Kind of a wishy-washy bonus if you ask me, but maybe their willpower just isn't as steady as it needs to be to be a Green Lantern. We take the quick recognition feat so we can attempt to recognize the spell with our religion skill as a free action instead of spending our reaction. Level 13 oracles gain weapon specialization for an additional flat 2 damage on our simple and martial weapons and unarmed strikes, light armor expertise for expert proficiency in light armor and unarmored defense, and lightning reflexes for expert reflex saves. The tongue spell, heightened to level 7, allows us to speak and understand any language we encounter for up to 8 hours. This only gets us one language at a time, so if we're in a particularly diverse group, you're better hope that other people also have universal translators strapped to their fingers, or else you're going to have to do some verbal gymnastics. But we do get better at aerial gymnastics at this level too. With the aerialist feat, we gain a plus 2 circumstance bonus to maneuvering and flight checks, and get a 5 foot bonus to our flying speed as long as we're flying under magical means. Mysterious Repertoire lets us add a spell that isn't on the divine list to our repertoire and cast it as a divine spell. Kind of awkward, we got all the way up to level 14 before getting mage armor on the guy who literally always has mage armor up, but better late than never to get a plus 2 bonus to AC and a saving throws while using an armor defense with a plus 5 dex cap. A hero needs to be able to do more than just shield people from harm, we also need to give them hope, even if that's another color on the spectrum. No cause for alarm reduces the frightened condition of creatures in a 10 foot emanation based on a diplomacy check. Probably not a bad ability to have when your greatest enemies are powered by fear itself. Level 15 oracles gain master proficiency in divine spell attack rolls and DCs. They can also cast 8th level spells, heightening righteous might for a bigger bonus, more HP, and a 10 foot reach because the only thing better than a glowing man with glowing weapons is a giant glowing man with giant glowing weapons. We also might be able to cast it at the start of combat too with the incredible initiative feat for a plus 2 bonus to all initiative rolls. 16 levels in and we're finally a legendary professional because when you've walked away from as many crashes as we have, people start to remember your name. We also earn more money than average from piloting which is kind of confusing since we seem to destroy every plane we come across. We'll take Greater Revelation to pick up the most oddly specific spell in our kit. Moonlight Bridge creates a 10 by 120 foot bridge of light. The bridge has 10 AC, 30 hardness, and 60 HP and can block most attacks and only lets our allies cross. Honestly, this is such an oddly specific spell, I didn't think anything other than a power ring wielder would ever actually use this for a build. Level 17 oracles are subjected to the effects of their extreme curse because not even the greatest lantern can fully harness all of the green energy at once. If we cast a revelation spell while under the effects of our major curse, we become doomed too, or increase our doom condition by 2 if we already have it. Pushing ourselves too hard again might mean we never fully recover. But you've got too much will to stay out of the fight forever. Greater Resolve gives us legendary will saves, critical success results on regular successes, regular fails on critical fails, and whenever we fail a will save, we only take half damage from the effect. We also get ninth level spells. Weapon of Judgment conjures a giant light mace of hard light. We choose war or peace, and the weapon automatically attacks based on our choice for a minute, dealing 3d10 plus our charisma modifier of force damage on a hit. 
For our ancestry feat, Virtue Force Tattoos gives us a third level arcane conjuration spell once per day, and it would be pretty awkward for a police officer if they couldn't actually apprehend a target. The Paralyzed spell stuns or paralyzes a target for up to four rounds based on a will save, plenty of time to detain the perp, non-lethally that is. We may be able to reduce civilians' frightened conditions, but what about our own? The Aura of Courage champion feat reduces the value of any frightened condition we gain by one, and whenever we reduce our frightened condition value, we also reduce the value of all our allies within 15 feet as well. Divine Guidance is one of those feats that gets better the more creative your GM is. We spend 10 minutes to study the Book of Oa, and based on our religion check, we gain some insight into a current or future problem we might face. Level 19 Oracles are legendary spellcasters who gain a 10th level spell slot. Teleport lets us bring ourselves and up to 4 friends on a journey based on the level we cast the spell at. 100 miles at level 6, 1000 miles at 7th level, anywhere on the planet at 8th level, and anywhere in the solar system at 9th level, and finally, anywhere in the same galaxy at 10th level. Not quite intergalactic, but if your GM really has a setting with more than just one galaxy, first of all, thank your GM for all of their effort, and also kindly ask them for a bigger range on your 10th level spell. We've got pretty much everything a Green Lantern would ever need, but we don't quite have that Hal Jordan versatility. Incredible Improvisation gives us a proficiency bonus equal to our level on all skills that we are untrained in, which is like half of them. We'll pick up Legendary Codebreaker because while tongues can help us speak anything, the ring can also decipher any known language in the written world as well. Now we can basically decipher writing in real time at a normal reading speed. If we do take the normal amount of time and we get a success on the society check, we get a critical success instead and gain a word for word understanding of whatever we're reading. For our capstone feat, we really drive home the message that we can make a construct from literally whatever shape we can imagine. Paradoxical Mystery lets us gain the initial or advanced spell from the domain list in the core rulebook or any initial or advanced revelation spell from any of the other oracle mysteries. Want to fly speed more than once per day? Traveler's Transit gives us that for a minute. Need information about a new city you're visiting? Pulse of the City allows us to instantly learn the most commonly known information about a settlement we're in. But whatever you choose also gains the curse bound trait, meaning casting it will increase the severity of our curse like our other revelation spells. But now that we're level 20, let's go over the pros and cons of this build. For starters, our allies will basically never die while we're around. We basically have every magical shield in the book and some we can even cast on the fly, not to mention a champion's reaction that can potentially just flat out negate damage. We've also got a surprising amount of mobility between the added jumping abilities provided by our curse, but also getting both fly and air walk or just floating an inch off the ground means we always have the correct method of flight for any situation. Lastly, max charisma and legendary diplomacy means it's probably best if we do the talking. For cons, we're not really a damage dealer. We've got a few spells to hold our own when we need to, but we're more of a peace officer. We also get mage armor very late in the build, so even though we're all about barriers, our personal AC is going to lag behind pretty hard if we don't invest in some more conventional armor at the start. We also are not so good at the whole secret identity thing, so do us all a favor and leave the CG mask in the drafts. Thanks for tuning in to another build. Subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. We post a new build every week. Join the Patreon to vote for the current DC poll between Bane, Nightwing, and Superman, and download character sheets for this build as well as everything we've built on the channel so far. Until next time, have a good week, take care, and play more Pathfinder.